the stack works. Remember that the stack is a temporary storage area for variables when programs are running and for parameters to that program including command line arguments. The stack works like so. The stack is a LIFO queue which means the last thing to go onto the stack is the first thing that comes off of the stack. And the way we put things onto and take things off of the stack is through two operations called push and pop. If we push something it goes onto the stack and then to take something off the stack we use pop and it takes the last thing that was put onto the stack off the stack. So if we push two things off to the stack onto the stack they will come back in the opposite order in which we put them on the stack. So if we push one thing onto the stack we then push another thing onto the stack this item then moves down one we've got two items in the stack now the first item that we pop off is the last one that we put on and this is what we mean by a life queue. The last thing that we put onto the stack is the first thing that came off that comes off the stack when we pop it off. So let's have a look at a simple program. This is a program written in assembly language. This stuff at the start is just setting the program up. We're saying the program is going to run on a 32-bit CPU. Everything that follows this section dot text line is computer code, i.e. assembly instructions. And then we've got one label called underscore start. And this essentially sets the entry point to the program. When the operating system loads the program, where should it start running instructions? We then run a series of push instructions which push values in hexadecimal onto the stack. And then we run a series of pop instructions to take the values off of the stack and put them into registers. And then towards the end, we've got a, a system call to actually exit the program. So what we're going to do is we're going to load this into the IDA debugger and actually have a look at what it's doing. This uh, is just a configuration window telling you what type of file it thinks the executable is. Let's just choose some extra options. The defaults here are normally perfectly acceptable. So we have a look here, here is our program. You can see there's our four pushes and our four pops, and then our code to exit the program. I just put some extra information around, just sort of giving you extra information about the file which we're disassembling. But we're going to start the program here and run this very first push instruction. So if I right click on this instruction and click run to curse, it's actually going to run the program and stop at that point so we can step through instruction by instruction. Now when the IDA debugger launches, we get a slightly different configuration of Windows. I'm just going to drag these down a little bit. We've got our disassembly up here. This is our actual code. Scroll down a little bit, you can see the current instruction which we're running is highlighted by blue. We've got the values for all our registers here, and we've got our stack contents here. Now these, the stack is essentially just an area in memory, so this is the memory address at which this particular stack entry is at. And then here are the actual the individual stack entries. So to give you an example, if we go to that memory address in this hex bit on the left hand side, we can press the G button and type in the memory address BF861830. This is the very top of our stack. This is where the last thing that went onto the stack before our program started. You see it's this number one here. If you look along a bit further, is this BF8628, BF2688. So this is the current position in which our stack is in memory. So let's run the first push operation. If we press F7, it will step over that, it will run that individual instruction and step to the next one. You'll see in the right hand side here now all the A's have appeared on the stack, and you'll see in memory, going backward essentially in memory, four A's have appeared in memory. Now the important thing to note here is the ESP register always contains the memory address of the last thing to go on the stack, or the, the top of the stack if you like. So at the moment the ESP register points to this location here. When we push another thing onto the stack, you'll see it occur there, appear on the stack, and now the ESP register points down back to here. So let's run through the next couple of instructions. Da -da -da. So now we've got our four entries on the stack, and ESP points to here. We're then going to take them off the stack, so we're going to pop four bytes off the stack and put it into the EAX register. So F7, these four bytes have now come off the stack and gone into the EAX register 
and now the ESP register, which is the stack pointer, points to this location here. Note that the old values haven't been deleted from mem memory, but that's because we don't essentially care about them anymore. The ESP register now points to here. So run the next one. We're going to have to take the next four values, four bytes off the stack, and put it in the EBX register. It goes into the EBX register, you see it disappear from there, and now the ESP register, which is the top of the stack, points to here. Again with the ECX register, BBB, and then EDX goes into e EDX. So notice they came off in the opposite order in which we put them on. DD was the last thing to go onto the stack, so therefore it's the first thing to come off the stack when we pop it off the stack. So that's a simple overview of how the stack works. Just keep in mind the stack is just somewhere in memory, somewhere in memory, and the ESP register points to the last thing to go on the stack, and every time we put something onto the stack, the ESP register points to four bytes backwards. It moves backwards through memory as we add stuff onto the stack.